Good morning, good morning to you, my brothers and sisters. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. My brothers and sisters, oh, magnify the Lord me and let us exalt his name together, for he alone is worthy. Now, there's none other like him. There's none other greater than him. My brothers and sisters, I'm just so excited for the great Jehovah God, our provider. I'm just thanking God for he did it again. He did it again because he allowed you and I another day to worship him in spirit and truth. Another day for you and I to give him honor and glory and praise for the great and mighty things that he has already done. He's doing and he's going to do if we only keep the faith. My brother and sister, I'm so excited and grateful for this day. And I pray that you are so as excited as I am with my brother and sister. I'm just grateful and thankful for God allowing me another day, another day to minister the word of God into your life, into my life, that we may be empowered more, empowered more to walk in this new life that we have in Christ Jesus. Now that we are new creatures, now we have another Father, our Heavenly Father, that we can show forth our Father how we are walking in obedience to Him. And not forsaken, not forsaken, the similar ourselves together. We may not be in each other's presence physically, but my brothers and sisters, we have to realize that we're many members of one body and we're connected. We're connected in the spirit realm. So we give God glory, honor, praise for that. My brothers and sisters, I pray you're so excited about the word of God today. I'll encourage you from 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. I've been reading your here verses 7 through 13. But before we get into the word of God, we're going to touch on the grand prayer. The word of God tells us to ever pray without ceasing. And to give thanks in all things was the will of God concern us in Christ Jesus. And we need to realize that when praises goes up, as we always say, the blessings of God come down. Because our faithfulness unto Him. We don't believe God. We're going to believe God like never before to continue to renew our minds and powers to that the Holy Spirit. That we can not only worship Him in spirit and truth, but we, will, we can be living epistles here in the earth. Showing forth the light of Christ is in a dark world, a dark, simple world. But my brother and sister God said we're to be the salt of the earth and a light that cannot be hid in a bush, a light that cannot be turned out. <laughs> because what now we have the light of Christ that within us through that the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Oh, as the Holy Father in heaven, we magnify and glorify your holy name. Lord God, because you alone are worthy, there's none other like you, there's none other greater than you. But God, we come to you most of all invoking your presence on today. Asking you, God, to have your will and your way in all of our lives through by your Holy Spirit, through by your word, through by your vessels, through by your people of God on today. We thank you, God, for even now, anointing our eye gates as we look upon your word. Anoint our ear gates that we hear your word, God. God, anoint our hearts that we receive your word on today. And through by your word going forth on today. For you said, God. That your word shall go forth, it shall not come back, but it shall do what you said to accomplish in the lives of your people. And whatsoever that we desire, we pray, believe we shall have it. And we are thanking you already in advance, Lord God, for your word today, saving, healing, delivering, empower, renewing our minds, increasing our faith, causing us, Father God, to walk in the holiness of you. But we know you said in your word, holiness without shall no man, woman, or boy, or girl see God. But we're going to see you one day face to face because our faith. We're going to continue to walk by faith and not by sight because we know, God, your word has the power. Your word has the power to transform. So if your word go forth today, God, let it go to our entire being, Father God, that we will surrender to, to the presence of your Holy Spirit and most of all in submission to your word and walk in obedience that we give you for it even now. So thank those of God that's on coming on now and those that's coming on later. Bless our hearts and minds. Let your anointing, God, that you said your anointing, that will destroy every binding. You'll let your work known to have your perfect will and purpose in your life. That we be loose from the bondage of the infirmities and afflictions and the strongholds of demonic possessions and the works of the evil wicked ones in darkness, God. For you said that you are light of the world. And we thank you even now for the light of Christ, Jesus Christ, which is in heaven even now, on the right hand of the Father, still interceding for us, your people. And we give you glory and praise and thanks for even now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen. My brothers and sisters, the word of God on today for the people of God. I become the first Thessalonians, the third chapter, the seventh through the thirteenth verse. The word of God says, Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. But what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy with which we joy for your sakes before our God. Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see you face to your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, direct our way unto you. 
and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end he may establish your hearts, unblameable in holiness, before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, with all his saints. So my brothers and sisters, I want to thank God for the word of God I just read, First Thessalonians, the third chapter, verses 7 through 13. And this is where we see here Apostle Paul, who he's speaking to the church of Thessalonians. We see in First Thessalonians, the first chapter, we see that it's Apostle Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus, how they are ministering and speaking to the Thessalonian church, which is a new church in the faith, a young church of new believers. But we see here, according to the word of God, how that Apostle Paul, how they had been afflicted. They've been afflicted in other books and Acts, even in uh, Philippians, how they even do it to the proclaiming of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even how sometimes they was beaten, they were whipped, and they was put in prison. But we see that because of the cause on their life, they continue to remain faithful, faithful unto God and faithful unto their calling that God has sent them to. The Apostle Paul said himself that he is an apostle. Not a man, but of God. God himself called him. He had a personal encounter with him on the Damascus Road. So the word of God said, men are called and feel chosen. Men that God calls, he gives. He gives these gifts and earthly vessels. That all these gifts that we're using, even the gift I use today, whether it's preaching or teaching or, or the prophetic, whichever gift that I use that God has given me, is given to me by God. Nothing that I can pay for is God himself designed to give me those gifts. As the same way he had designed to give you gifts. What we see here, according to the word of God, Apostle Paul, how they were together and even during to the affliction, how they even, how he remained in Athens and even um, Savannah, and how that he sent Timothy. He sent Timothy because he wanted Timothy to go forth. He wanted Timothy to go to the church. He wanted Timothy to encourage them. He wanted to encourage them in their faith. And this is what we see according to the word of God because he didn't want them to be friend, he didn't want them to lose hope and faith because of the affliction that they seen Apostle Paul them go through. They wanted them to realize that in reading scriptures, how that he let them know this affliction, when the word of God said, many other afflictions of the righteous, but he would deliver them out of them all. Apostle Paul knew that God said those that suffer with him shall reign with him, and how that the affliction and the persecution, the tribulation, the temptation, the abuse that they was going through was all for the sake of the kingdom of God. And for the cause of the cause on their life. But they knew it wasn't for the sake of God. That they was held accountable to what? Go proclaim the gospel. In and out of season. Whether they want to hear it or not. No matter what persecution they go through. And this is what they want to warn. They've been living a pistol example of these our callings. <laughs> That's why I said count up the cost. Our calling does not mean that we're not going to go through tribulation and persecution. Because Jesus Christ himself said they hated us. Hated him, they're gonna hate us as well. And that those that suffer him should reign with men that that's what happened to Jesus. The same thing happened to Jesus, and even Apostle Paul has been a great example. But what Apostle Paul is so excited for how he continued to pray and give thanks to them, thanks unto God for them continually, joyfully excited that in spite of the persecution that they was even going through, how they remained faithful, and he wanted them to realize that that soon when I said our Lord Jesus. It's coming back again. He is coming back again. And that's what Apostle Paul wanted to realize. He did not want them to lose faith and lose hope. Even he encouraged uh, uh, Timothy. He encouraged Timothy and um, first Timothy, I believe, how he encouraged him that in him being a, new, a young pastor, a young leader, he encouraged him that even when he's ministering, when he's teaching, he used this gift that God has given to him. Don't lose faith. Don't lose um hope and the faith that knowing that his mother, his grandmother, when he said Judas and Lord, how they taught him in faith as a young man, as a young child how he told him, walk in the faith that you was taught from your mother and from your grandmother that you need to keep that same faith, that same zeal as you go forth as a leader. Not only that, even what I've taught and trained you, continue to go forth. And this is what Apostle Paul, even how he was saying how he loved them so how he desired to see them again although he was with them for a short period of time how uh, Apostle Paul said you know I did even he said I'm so grateful for the good report <laughs> he said I'm grateful because you know Timothy he took back a report to Apostle Paul and Apostle Paul was saying you know I'm grateful I'm excited I'm overjoyed for the good report that I received from Timothy y'all walking in your faith and he said I'm just overjoyed how you all have continued to remember us 
And we'll remember to see you in the same way you desire to see us, us again. We're designed to believe it that we will see you face to face again. And believe it that the Lord will make provision. He will make provision that we'll come back to visit you again. But for now, uh, Timothy has been sent. And now, Timothy has given us a good report. But we want you to know, when the word of God said, pray without ceasing. We're going to continue to pray for you day and night. <laughs> they, I tell you, I thank God for somebody volunteer to pray for me day and night. I tell you, I thank God to know I believe we have a 24-7 God that's all knowing all sin. And God has prayer warriors all around the world from the north, south, east, and west constantly praying. Praying while we're sleeping and resting. Somebody else is praying. That's why I said, so you pray for me, I pray for you. And we got individuals that know not each other by name, don't know each other in the natural. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the spirit. We are praying, we are tapping into each other's spirit, praying. But whatever we need or whatever this is that God need to do in our lives, what it is we need to do that God has signed us to. That even Apostle Paul has said in other scriptures how that he desired to come to him, but because of Satan, the tempter was a hindrance. He was a hindrance. The reason why he was a hindrance, even when they were proclaiming the gospel in and out of season, how that he was whipping them, chasing them, having put them in prison. But guess what? Do you know that gospel cannot be bound? <laughs> that gospel cannot be bound, my brothers and sisters. You may not, we may not be to go everywhere people go to need the gospel God helps service when he says that the harvest is plentiful and the labors are few we pray to the Lord of harvest that he raised the labors in his harvest that he was raised us up to go proclaim his gospel in and out of season no matter what God has saints he's ever leave us all over this world to proclaim his word so God's word is going forth my brothers and sisters even if we have to pray even Jesus Christ himself, when he was here in this earthly realm, he didn't always go, even the centurion, even when they had servants sick, or, or, the death, or the daughters that had died, and Jesus went someplace or someplace, and he just spoke the word. <laughs> and that's why when the word of God said the word is quick and powerful and sharp, and in it too, as war prayers, even divided us under soul and spirit, joint and mind, and present our thoughts and tense of the heart, mind grows so that we can speak the word and prayer. And that's how we do. We pray. Pray the will of God. And this is what Apostle Paul said. I know he's praying, Father, please don't let them lose faith. Please let them uh, continue walking the measure of faith. They know the measure of faith that you've given them. Allow their faith to increase. That they don't like in their faith. Because Apostle Paul knew. When we start waving, the word of God says, a double-minded man, woman, boy, girls. I'm saving all the way. When we start wavering in our faith. One minute we believe he can. One minute we say, well, I think he can. Well, he said it would, but I don't know. It hasn't happened yet. But the word of God tells us anything that we do outside of faith is sin. So we'll start doubting what God said he's able to do in his word. That meaning that we'll sin. Because we're saying God is not able to do what he said he would do. If God said he was a healer, he said, Beloved, all things my will you prosper. Even being health is your soul prosper. Our soul and our bodies are going to be healed through by the prosperity or through the word of God. So we've been afflicting and affirming our bodies. We need to pray the word of God. Now let's pray. And not only hear the word of God, the word of God said not only be hearers of the word, but doers that we deceive not ourselves. And this is why Apostle Paul, he said, don't lose your faith, because faith is one of the foundation of, of you of being able to withstand whatever that you are coming against in this earth. Whether it's through trials, tribulations, persecution, what, or even maybe trying to get you to waver and doubt in your relationship. Even some people today, they know they repent of their sins. And we may not act like believers, we may not always talk like believers, but our faith is what makes us whole. He said, for the grace that we say through faith, not a works that's in the man should boast, it's a gift of God. So Apostle Paul is here, what he said, I'm grateful, I'm overjoyed for the report, how that you're walking faith. But he said, I'm sending Timothy back, because I know you're young babes, I know you're young believers, and I don't want the tempt of Satan to come deceive you. I don't want him to deceive you, Not I want to send Timothy to make sure that he's making sure that you're remaining in your faith. You know how the word of God said that thief come to kill, steal, destroy. God said, I come. I come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. It's his will that we live and not die. It's his will that we be empowered, that we live a victorious life. But he know the thief always seeking who he may devour. <laughs> he comes. He comes as a what? A wolf and sheep clothed and tried to see us with my brother and sister Maria may claim, but we remain close to the chief shepherd, to God our good shepherd, the one that never sleep nor slumber. When we remain and walk in obedience to the word of God, my brothers, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear what the enemy try to do. We don't have to fear frictions and affirmatives and trials and tribulation and persecution. Because we know God tells us in the word. He said that battle is not our is the water, no weapon born against us shall prosper. And this is what he's saying. But my brothers, 
our Lord Jesus is coming back again. And we need to remain. We need to be prepared. And that's why I encourage you today, not only in our faith, but even in love. We saw Apostle Paul was excited. He was excited and he wanted Timothy to encourage him. And knowing he said, y'all need to walk in love. <laughs> love towards each other. Love not only to each other as brothers and sisters, but love to all men. <laughs> the one that love you, the one that don't love you, the one that are believers and not believers. The word of God says, so how can we say we love God that we've never seen and don't we love our brothers and our sisters and those we consider to be enemies? The word of God says, people will know we the disciples by the love that we show for one another, by us obeying the commands of his word. That's why he said, love ye one another. He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Mind, body, soul, and spirit, love thy neighbor as thyself. He didn't say that the neighbor had to be saved. He didn't say they had to be a saint or believer or one in the way. He said, love. Yeah. And you know, they said, who, it's like Jesus said. When they said, well, who is your brother? Who's your sister? He said, those that do the will of my father. We are known by our fruits. We don't have to ask anyone if they're saved. We don't have to judge anyone if they're not saved. The word of God said, we're known by our fruit. And one of the fruits is the spirit of love, showing love to one another. Even walking in our faith, which is a gift from God. So we see it, my brothers and sisters, love. Love is a foundation besides faith that we have to have, that we have to be shown forth in the earth before we, not before, only before the return of Christ, but before we check out of here in this earth realm, because some of us are check out before he returned. But when we, we check out, let's make sure that we are walking in faith. Let's make sure God knows we walk in love. And, and this is what Jesus himself exemplified when God gave his son. He said, for God, so love the world, he gave his only begotten son, that who suffered me should not perish. For he sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that we might be saved. He commits love to one while we yet sinners. So it says Christ died for our sins, and he committed his love to what we yet sinners. How much more? Then now that we believe in Christ, someone's going to get holy and now, and now that we're saved, we want to judge and be little and look down on people because they're not saved. But the word of God tells us, for all of sin and fall short of glory of God, and we were conceived in sin in our mother's womb. So we were all guilty as charged as sin, just because we're not in Christ. And even since our new birth in Christ, some of us have still sinned, even our sin. But I thank God for Jesus being our advocate, being the tone of us. I thank God for Jesus that shedding his blood, the word of God says, but without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remission me, forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I thank God for the blood. Last time we want to sing these blood songs about there's power in the blood of Jesus and the blood still works and it never loses power. Do we believe that in faith? I don't know about you. <laughs> I believe it's supernatural in the realm of God that he gave me a heart transfusion. He gave me a blood transfusion. But he gave me a new heart. He put in new blood. <laughs> I didn't have to go to the hospital and have a heart surgery in the natural and have a, a blood transfusion. Huh? I had a, you better believe like I believe we had a supernatural divine. And that's how we can realize those impure things in our hearts. <laughs> those wicked, evil. The word of God said, evil and wickedness and sick is what's in our hearts. When we walk in sin and disobedience, it's because it's in our heart. It's what we're born with. That's why we had to do like David. That's God to create a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit in you and in the me. I pray because I know I need it. I know I need a cleanse and a detox. Just not from my physical body, but in my spirit. And it comes through by the word of God. When I thank God how much powerful he said love is. And my brother and sister, the word of God even tells us how perfect love casts out fear. We don't have to fear perfect love because perfect love casts out fear. And realize that love covers a multitude of sin. Does it mean when I say love covers a multitude of sin? That I mean that we can see it and not repent and it still be covered. I mean we have to repent of these sins. But he said we confess our sins. He is faithful and just forgive us of our sins. And that cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And that's the only way that our sin will be covered. Because then he's going to blot it out. We got to acknowledge. For he said that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And for the way the sin is death for the gift of God and eternal life through Jesus Christ. So we got to acknowledge my brothers and sisters that we are sinners. We was born in sin and have sinned even after our natural birth, after our spiritual birth. We still sin, but I thank God. When we confess Jesus who are interceding, you know the Satan is accusing of the brothers. He's accusing of us. He's accusing us. He knows and God knows too. The last time we said God knows who I am. He knows my heart. He knows I need help. Yes, he's given us help. That comforter has come. The comfort of the Holy Spirit is our helper. <laughs> the leading God is the all truth. The brain about the word of God back to our members in time of need. My brother, sister, we're dealing with the faith. We're dealing with also the love that Apostle Paul was concerned about. And even not only the attempt to become, but also he was talking about the heart. 
It was talking about our hearts. Whenever God saw the pure in heart, shall see God, the deceitful of all our hearts, our deceitful of all things, that's for the wicked. And the only way we can be deceived by our hearts is when we don't have the word of God in our heart that we sin up against Him. When we don't have the word of God in our heart that the Holy Spirit can bring it back to our remembrance and time and need. I cannot remember all that I read in the word of God. I cannot remember Genesis to Revelation. Even I can minister today. In a few seconds, I may forget what I said or what I remember. But when I thank God, the Holy Spirit is all-knowing that's within my heart, that's in your heart. And time of need will bring the word of God back to our remembrance. I don't remember everything, but I thank God when a scripture and the Holy Spirit starts speaking me through by the Spirit. I know it's word because I read it. I didn't remember, but the Holy Spirit is letting me know I'm still in your house. And that's why it's so very important. My brother and sister, we take time each and every day. To read the word of God, study the word of God, because that is the food for our spirit, for our inner man. We cannot go a day without reading the word of God. You may not spend hours and hours and hours in the word, but make it in your mind that you're going to read the word of God. And I'm making my mind, I'm going to read the word of God. Read it, because what? We're feeding our spirit, the Holy Spirit. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Someone, I don't understand what I read it. If you can't read, some individuals, not judge individuals, some people cannot read. Some people can read, but not at different levels, reading levels. So my brother says, God said, we have no excuse. We got too much technology. If you find someone on social media, on um, TV, or even get Bible on tape, you may not be able to read. But you, even now, you don't have to buy Bible on tape. You got it free on our cell phones. It, all this social media you got, don't tell me. There's no way that... Even though whether you can read or may not be able to read that intellectually, that you cannot hear the word of God. What you can do is, I listen to it too. Listen to the Bible on tape. Listen on the social media. Listen on the TV. Hear the word of God. So faith come out here to hear by the word of God. And then in Revelation, talk, blessed be that read these prophets and do those things that's written there in. So my brother says, God said, if we read it, we're blessed. If we hear it, we're blessed. <laughs> we're still blessed. My brothers, we have no excuse. The only thing I'm saying is, we are in the Advent season and we are so excited. And every individual are preparing for to celebrate Christmas, celebrate, celebrating the birth of Christ. My brother and sister, he's no longer in the manger now. <laughs> he's, there's nothing wrong with celebrating, but remember this. Although you want to still celebrate, we want to still celebrate him in the manger. I'm not celebrating him in the manger. I'm celebrating that he's on his way back. And I'm celebrating the pan, preparing for his coming. And look, we don't have to do like the Magi. We don't have to do, we don't have to take him gifts. The only gift he wants from us, my brother and sister, we cannot even buy a gift to give to our Lord and Savior. He just wants to give of ourselves. That's why Apostle Paul said in Romans 12, 1, 2, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable of your reason, so that you be not conformed to this world, but be transformed through by the renewal of your mind. He just wants us while we're living sacrifices. Let's sacrifice unto the world. The word of God says obedience is better than sacrifice. Our obedience to the word, but we need to give of ourselves. It's nothing that he needs. He said the earth is the Lord and the full is and all they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to him. Yes, we do belong to him. But then it comes to the fact, but are we the sons and daughters of God? Are we? Or are we the sons and daughters of Satan? It makes a difference. Everybody said, well, he's my father just like your father. But Jesus said, Who's my brother? Who's my sister? Who's my mother? Those that do the will of my father. So he's saying that if we are not born again, and if we don't have the whole, and we are not even believing in it, that we have the Holy Spirit, we're not of his, because he knows the Holy Spirit is just like the yolk in the egg. The Holy Spirit, they said, just like the icing on the cake. There's no way, <laughs> there's no way that we can truly declare and decree that we are truly born again if we don't believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, because Jesus Christ himself. He said, man, my father's one. How can you say you've seen me and you haven't seen the father? You've seen me, you've seen the father. You've seen the father, you've seen me. Because we won. And that's how it is that now that we've been born again, now that we've been born again of the spirit of God, when individuals see us, who they should see, they should see God. They should see God within us by the life that we live, how we're bearing fruit here in the earth. Because we're his ambassadors, we're his messengers, we're his representation here in the earth. So my brother and sister is not so much about our outer appearance. But God says, man, look at the outer appearance, but he look at the heart. It's where the heart, where the spirit is, where the Holy Spirit is the heart, where the blood of Jesus is. <laughs> you talking about putting it on the doorpost, I tell you, I thank God for the blood. Because the blood still works, it still has power. It has power to still save, heal, deliver, and empower. My brother and sister, 
our Lord Jesus coming back again will be ready. That's why Apostle Paul was concerned about the heart. We see in how he prayed. <laughs> how he prayed. That's why we need to pray ye constantly, my brothers and sisters, pray ye for one another. And this is what I like about Apostle Paul when he was saying that now um, in verse 11, verse Thessalonians 3, 11, he said, Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And the Lord make your increase abound in love one toward another, toward all men, even as we do toward you. He's saying, this is my prayer for you. He said, I know y'all love us and we love you too. Verse 13, he said, to the end he may establish your hearts, unblameable and holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hey, if we don't be here, we come. It said he's coming back with the saints. <laughs> he's returning back with the saints. Will we be ready? Will you be ready? Will I be ready when we check out of here beforehand, before he returns? Or when he comes back, will we be ready if we still remain? So this is what he said. When the word of God said, we, our bodies, are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And they that destroy the temple, he will destroy because he's preparing. He's preparing our bodies. He said he will go away and prepare a place for you and I. And he will come back and receive us unto himself. But he's not going to receive nobody unto himself if we're not holy. The word of God said, so host thou shall no man, woman, boy, girl, see God. Meaning that we, we're going to see him as king or we're going to see him as judge. I'm going to see him as he says, he's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm going to see him as king of king and laws of Lord. That's why the word of God said, a man, woman, boy, God wants to die. The judgment day is coming. Judgment day is coming. My brothers, will you and I, will you and I be ready? And this is my, this is my prayer for you. Just like Apostle Paul, my prayers too, that you continue to walk in your faith, that you don't like in your faith and lose faith and lose hope, that you walk in the love, that we love like Jesus loved. Love that, that, feel, that you feel like not loving, and love those that you love. But remember, you have, have no respect of person. How he says the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We should love like he loved, and he's our prime example. And we cannot say that we can't love. But we are baptized and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers and enables us. That's why it's me to realize that the Holy Spirit not only within us to lead and guide us all truth and to teach us all things, to bring the word of God back to our members in time and need, but the Holy Spirit there to intercede on our behalf. Intercede on our behalf that God's perfect plan and purpose and will be done in your life, be done in my life. And that's why sometimes when we pray in the Spirit, sometimes we may not interpret, we may not, but it's a heavenly language that God has given early believer that the devil can't even understand. <laughs> You know how it is. We understand the English that we talk, and sometimes we can't even understand the English that we talk. Sometimes we can't even stand, understand language of other cultures. Um, but guess what? Sometimes we have to take lessons and learn how to speak other people's languages. But my brother says, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you on this day that through by the power and the aim of the Holy Spirit, we have a new language, we have a new tongue. That's through by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray in our spirit and our gifted. That guess what? Because it's not only for um, our edification is that God's perfect will be done in our lives. But sometimes we don't even know what to pray for. And that's why we, we don't do repetitive prayers. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with giving God thanks. We should give Him thanks and all things. But sometimes we really don't know what to pray for as we are. But guess what? We pray in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost knows all things. The Holy Ghost what taps into the realm of the heaven. And we pray in God, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Sometimes we don't know what the will of God is. We know that His word is His will. But sometimes we are seeking God what is real is. Sometimes we have to search the word of God. But we pray in the Spirit of God. We're us through our Holy Spirit that He is embodying you and I as to what we need to do next. That's why the word of God tells us. We need to trust the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, if we continue to acknowledge Him, He will direct our path. He will do that because He prepared us for His return. That's why I don't lose hope in your faith. Continue to walk in the love of God. No matter what, make up your mind. I made up my mind. I'm going to walk in the faith of God. I'm going to walk in the love of God because I can do this. You can do this. We can do all things in Christ is next us. Do by the power of He commands us to do it. We can do it because of the Holy Spirit within us. We can be confident. It's one thing, my brothers and sisters. God that has begun a good work and you and I are going to perform it to the day of Jesus Christ's return. Our Lord and Jesus, He's coming back again. <laughs> he's coming back again. Will you and I be ready? Will we make sure other individuals... Will we make sure individuals in our families are ready? Um, our friends, our neighbors, our community, strangers, even enemies. Will we make sure that they be ready? If they reject this great gospel, it's not our fault. 
the word of God says, some plant, so, so plant, so water, but God give the increase. Our responsibility, my brothers and sisters, now new creature in Christ, is to be a witness here in the earth. Not only a witness through by what we say, but through by the light that we live. And that's what the word of God says, so we let our light so shine for men. They they should see our good works, they should glorify our Father which are in heaven. It should cause us to be come to a place of servitude. That now that we are newborn again, we in Christ. We should, our heart desire should be that other individuals know what it means that fall in love with Jesus, that believe, that love God's word, and walk, love to be in relationship with Him, and to walk in obedience to Him, to be so grateful that we have a God that forgives us of our sins and still love us in spite of me, <laughs> in spite of you. We should be grateful, and we should want other individuals to encounter the same love. That we have experienced the same relationship, the blessings of God, walking forth in the healing and the power of the Holy Spirit that we have in God. We should desire that for others. And this is what Apostle Paul did. This because he's Apostle Paul, this is what he did. That's why he said Timothy. He was concerned. He was concerned for his brothers and sisters because he knew what his assignment was. He wasn't judging their lack of faith. He just wanted to make sure that they didn't lose hope in their faith and their faith be increased. And even when it comes to the harm. And this is what we see here. How he prayed that they be unblankable. And they will walk in the holiness of God. The word of God tells us. They that seek and thirst after his righteousness shall be filled. The same way we seek God. We say seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these other things should be added to us. What we need to eat, drink, and what we need to put on. Don't worry about those things. God knows those are things, necessary things we need. He provides for the fowl of the air. And how he provides for the field, the grass, and the flowers that they did not. And then some faded away. But my brother said, he provides. So how much more will he not provide for us? He's the God of promise. If you are liking or need anything, a special faith, if you don't have the walking in the measure of faith, the love you should be, if your heart is not right, and the tempter is coming, you've been to see the word of God tells us. Therefore, there is no temptation coming to man that he has not already given us a way to escape. He has given us a way to escape because we have that key. We have the answer. The key to the kingdom is the word of God. We have the key to make sure that when he said that he is king of king and lord of lord, that we here in this earth, remember the kingdom of God is born again believers, that we have the key and the key is the word of God. And walk into obedience to God. This is the key. <laughs> it's nothing that locked the doors in our relationship with God. It's nothing that unlocked the doors of heaven but the word of God when we walk in faith, when we walk in love, when we have a clean and pure heart. Because let me tell you something, the word of God is what searches our hearts. <laughs> that means that anything in our heart is not of God. We study the word and walk in obedience to the word of God. We say out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak and life, death is in the power of the tongue. We can speak life over ourselves. We can speak death over ourselves or we can speak life, we can speak healing, we can speak deliverance and victory over ourselves and over the lives of others when we are one with the Father and the Son and connected through by the Holy Spirit when we are walking up right there before Him. When we are walking up right before Him. My brothers, we need to prepare not just for remembering His birth, but remember He said He's coming back one day. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back before a church that's holy or a church that's righteous. And he's talking about not these buildings, <laughs> not these buildings made by man's hands, but he's talking about the body of Christ. He's coming back for the bride, the church, the born, every born again believer. Will you and I be ready? Our Lord Jesus is coming back again. So in the midst of us praying, praying in this every season to celebrate and giving up gifts and showing forth love and eating and being merry be happy. Let's not leave Jesus out of the equation because remember, he is coming back again. And it's like how they're going to see, ready or not, here I come. It's that like he's going to come back like a thief in the night. And that's where the deaf angel come. A lot of times we know we're dying and some people don't know they're dying. And some people die instantly um, through minor sickness or disease. So I'm, um, unknowingly, even in accidents due to violence and crime. Or some individuals sleep on the way into the bosom of the Father. And individuals that we need not to weep, we need not to worry because it tells us in the 13th verse that when Jesus come, Jesus coming back again, he's coming back with the saints and we remain faithful and true to God. <laughs> As I say, walking in faith and the love with a clean and pure heart. And mind, my brothers and sisters, we'll see some of those loved ones again. Most of all, we'll see our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior and Redeemer, the one shed his blood for you and I because he loved us so and obeyed the Father. I thank God that we should do what we need to follow Jesus' example. That's why it tells us in Acts the 14th chapter verse 22, it said, Confirm the souls of the disciples and exhort them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Holes without shall no man see God. 
Tribulation, trial and tribulation is going to come, my brothers, to you and I. And that's what James tells in James 1, 3, and 4. I just want to share a few scriptures with you. I know I've been talking, but I want to share a few scriptures with you to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, that you can meditate on them, that you will know that what I'm just saying, um, although I wasn't pulling a lot of scriptures earlier, I just want to share something to you that you be encouraged. Do by the word of God in James 1, 3, and 4, it says, Knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect in a time and wanting nothing. Wanting nothing, my brother and sister. Patience. A lot of times I said, Lord, I don't have patience. Well, this is the answer here. Knowing the trial of your faith work with patience. So when you say you don't your patience is being tried, Lord, help you with your faith with your patience. And start stepping in on your faith. <laughs> when you feel like you just don't have the patience you need, it tells us. James 1 3. Knowing this that the trial of your faith work with patience. And that's why Apostle Paul said. Walk well, in faith. When we're going through trials and tribulation, persecution, my brothers and sisters, it takes faith. Not to try to take it in our own hands and work out in the flesh. It takes faith to trust in the faith of true God. That said, no one can form against us. You're possible. He'll never leave nor forsake us. He will be us to the end. We don't have to walk in the spirit of fear. Because even how Apostle Paul told Timothy, you don't have to, God has not given you the spirit of fear, the power of love and a sound mind. Power of love and a sound mind. So there you go again. We need to walk in love. When we walk in love, we walk in power. We want a sound mind. That's why the word of God tells us when you pray, God, let that mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus, my big brother. A mind to walk in obedience to you, a mind to submit to your mind in spite of trials, tribulations, persecution, disappointments, and firmness and afflictions, that I can trust and know that you are my healer, you're my protector, you're my provider, you are my victim, you've already overcome. And since you overcome, I'm over all overcomer, you are overcome. My brothers and sisters. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, it says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our salvation comes through by Jesus Christ. The Word of God tells us. There's no way to the Father except through by the Son. And that means that we have to believe in the grasp of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has made provision for you and I that the weak are not appointed to wrath. That's why the Word of God tells us we do not want to be in the hands of the angel of God. Yes, the wrath of God is towards the wicked and the evil ones. We all are guilty as child. I praise God. We all, what this call we saved now, we've been evil and wicked. And the wrath of God was appointed unto us. If we don't repent, the wrath of God is still appointed to us. And now, now that because of our salvation of Jesus Christ, if we continue to walk uprightly before God, walk in the holiness and righteous, walk in love and faith, we don't have to worry about the wrath of God. We don't have to fear. We don't have to fear being utterly destroyed. Because what? We're we'll walking in obedience to God's word. So the wrath of God is not unto us. Now that we're saved. That's why it's so very important that when we as believers, the called out one, the chosen by God, that are truly believers. When we say we need to quickly repent. When he said we confess our sins, his faith and just forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all righteousness. He want to make sure that we remain cleansed because he knows we know God is going to chastise those that he loves. If he did not chastise us, it's because we are bastards and we are not his children. And God loves us. He loves us so much he chastises us. Because you know how your parents say, I hate to beat you. Don't make me do it to you. I, I try hard not to, but you, you keep causing me, you're provoking me. Just how the word of God tells us parents don't provoke your children. And how we children should not provoke our parents. But sometimes, and that's how it is with God. When we as children of God walk in sin and disobedience, don't repent. Like our Heavenly Father is not going to hold us accountable. Like he's not going to chastise us. And then feel like that he shouldn't chastise us. God is going to do it because he loves us. And that's how it is with parents. Parents, if you truly love your children, you need to chastise them. Discipline them according to the word of God. Discipline and chastise them. They may get mad, angry, upset, and cry and talk about you and don't want to be bothered with you no more. I beg you this charge. I roll my eyes and talk about them. The parents to the brothers and the other people, they make me sick. I'm run away from home, beating me and doing this. And I saw, but let me tell you something. The way I was raised up, I did those things. I had to confess it myself. I did it, but guess what? I had enough sense not to go to my parents and tell them that. <laughs> Look, because I know my parents believe in discipline. You talking about discipline? They believe in discipline. So when I act out and get mad and upset, the word of God is to honor your mother and father's your day should be made upon the earth. I don't care if you're young children, middle age, teenager, or adults. I don't care if you're 50, 60, 70, your parents, 80, 90, 100. I don't care if they 
understand what you're saying or don't understand what you're saying. Honor and respect your parents. The word of God says, honor your mother, father, your day should be linked upon the earth. And even when I didn't honor and respect my parents, I thank God for grace and mercy. I thank God for allowing me a chance to repent. Because let me tell you, we're not going to be exempted. So I'm talking about this 11, 12 years old. I remember that, that the children are held accountable for the sins until the they're not accountable for their own sins to the trail. You know, no, they know right from wrong. When they come out of the womb, they know yes, no, and they know if you discipline them right. <laughs> they know. They may not even be the talk, but they understand what they're doing that's right and wrong. Because we are born with a knowing what's right and wrong. It's just that when we're children, God is holding those adults and, and the older ones responsible for making sure that we're made and molded in the image of God. That's why he said train up in the admonition of his word. So that's why it's so very important. Um, not to feel like that you cannot discipline and train your child up and feel like you don't have no instructions that children come without instruction. They do come with instruction. They come with the word of God's believers. They come with instructions through by the power of the Holy Spirit. And they come with instructions of old elder, elder training the younger. Um, training the younger. And that's what must happen in the word of God, the word of God today. But my brother says, John 14, 3, Jesus, is, he's coming, our Lord Jesus is coming back again. And we must be ready. We must not only be ready, but we need to have others be ready. Not just adults. We see now people are dying at all. People have always died at all ages. We just haven't known it because we didn't have so much technology. But now that we have so much technology with TV, social media, and cell phones, and all kind of um, web pages, and all kind of ways to connect to individuals, um, then now we can know more that pe people have been dying and dying ever since the beginning of time. <laughs> but now we are aware of it more. So God does not want to walk in the spirit of fear. Because we know we all going to die one day. Not that we want to die now, but uh, we will be ready when we do transition from this earth to the realm. So that's why since we're in this act we're talking about preparing for celebrating the birth. We need to celebrate the return of Christ. And that's why we need to be prepared. And that's why even here John 14, 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. He's coming back again. He's prepared a place for you and I. But the place is prepared for you and I. Okay, now. Yeah. It's, <laughs> there's a heaven and there's a hell. There's two destinations. So we can decide today. God does not force our hands. He says living in freedom in Christ. He gives us a free will to accept or reject him. So we can make, my brothers, we have the determination where we should spend eternity. We do while we got breath in our body. We can make up our mind. We can accept Jesus Christ the Lord and say, Redeem and walk in obedience to his word and his commands and spend eternity in heaven with him in the earthly realm, the new heaven. There's going to be a new heaven and there's going to be a new earth. Or are we going to continue to allow Satan, the principalities of the air, the father's earthly realm, who God himself is his father? He got dethroned because of him want to be. No one is greater than the master. No one is greater than the father. We should exalt, try to exalt ourselves above our master and our parents because they're the one that is above us. But guess what? Are we going to what? Spend eternity in hell. Make up our mind. The word of God said, Holy God should no man in one more see God. And remain with him forever. So we see it, my brothers, it's in Matthew 24, 36, it says, But of that day and hour north no man know not the angels in heaven but my Father on. Even the Father knows the appointed time that the end shall be. You know, I tell you, I just celebrated a birthday last month. And thank you all for your birthday shout outs. And guess what? I'm past 50. <laughs> Past the fact of 58, I have no shame in getting my older animals. I thank God for blessing me to see 58, and I'm older than 58 now because I don't have some couple more days extended until my life, and I'm grateful to thank for those extra days extended on. But what I'm saying with you, even as a young girl, I remember even going to church how sometimes people say that Jesus is coming, and they would say He's here, and people go in crowds, go to different places because they say He's here, He's gonna appear, and they go ahead and see Him yet. But I've been hearing from a young girl that he's coming back and he hasn't came back yet. But guess what? I'm going to be ready and I pray you be ready because I know eventually he will because in time past. You know how in the time of Noah, how that he just utterly destroyed the whole earth and everything on it except Noah and his family and he told them and the preacher to go on the ark. When it's stored by flood waters, he said, but remember that rainbow. He would not destroy mankind this earth again by flood waters, but it will be fire next time. My brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is this. He is coming back again. And for what's going on in this earth, 
the immorality, the sin, the violence, the crime, and the evil wickedness of the dark sea and the earth. He will be coming back again. I'm not going to tell you when because I don't know when. I just read here. Matthew 24, 36. This is a key verse to all us to remember. When someone will tell us, they know when he's coming. Matthew 24, 36 says, But of that day and hour doth no man know not the angels of heaven of my Father only. Only the Father know. The angels don't even know. No man know. So when somebody's telling me he's coming back in 2021, 2022, 2023, 2050, we don't know. He can come back right now. I'm going to be ready. And I pray you'll be ready. Because we don't know. But why? And this is what Apostle Paul was telling the Thessalonian church. He didn't want them to allow the persecution tribulations to um, cause them and the stress they go through. Cause them not continue to walk in their faith. Cause them not to walk in love. Cause them not to keep their hearts, hearts pure and unblameable and walking in the holiness of God's word. And walking in obedience and walking in love to all men. Because he wanted them to know he is coming back again. And when he comes back, will he find faith in the earth? Will he find love in the earth? Will he find those hearts that will prepare for his return? Will he? So we see also, my brother and sister, when I say that how it said that the saints will be coming back with him. First Thessalonians 4 17 tells us, 3 18. Then we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even <coughs> excuse me, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of our Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we shall ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And that's why I want to comfort you with these words, not only with the prayer that uh, Apostle Paul was praying for the Thessalonian church in 1 Thessalonians 3, 11 through 13. But I just want to encourage you with this, my brothers and sisters. Yes, we all have a lot of loved ones that are going on. But we know that they are in the Lord. We know where they are. We don't have to, um, yes, we grieve even Jesus wept. We grieve, we mourn the loss of loved ones. We cannot bring them back, but we can treasure the memories and our hearts and the love. And it should give us great joy. Like I said, sorry not for those that are gone home. Especially when we know they're in God. Even the ones that we know that are not in God, they not. But my brothers and sisters, um, we have to be accountable for our own soul salvation. Make sure that we can see the earth. Because my brothers and sisters, for those souls that God is holding us accountable to, to witness this great gospel to, of the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we don't walk in obedience, they may reject it, but they're not rejecting us. They're rejecting God and his gospel message. Um, let them reject, but at least they will have no excuse that we did not what, share the gospel with them. That's why we need to see here, also Romans 1.18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Meaning that, let me read that again, Romans 1.18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's why we need to ask God, sanctify us through by your word, for your word is true. God is the one that set us apart as God is the one that sanctifies us. He's the one that makes us holy. He's the one that imputes us righteous upon you and I. So my brothers, I probably said something to you t today to encourage you to remind you that our Lord Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back again, um, not as a baby, but as a king and as a judge. And I just want us to be ready. We make sure other individuals are ready. As I say, walking in faith, walking in love, and walking with a pure heart. A heart, like they said, like they a heart after God. And we, we have no excuse because we have the Holy Spirit of God within us that seals us 
to give us the assurance that if we confess our mouth on the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from dead, thou shalt be saved, for a man believe his heart unto righteousness, and confess is made to salvation. And how was said earlier about how that we, because of the salvation we have in Jesus Christ, we are not appointed to wrath. I tell you, I thought my parents gave me a good discipline for spanking and a whipping when I was younger. But I tell you, I'd rather end the day than have the discipline of my parents than the discipline of God. <laughs> but I tell you, but I thank God. I thank Him for loving me so much, even in His church. I have still to be spanked every now and then by God's word. If I, if I think things is not right, say things are not right, do what's not right. If I don't obey his command, he chastises me. I feel convicted when I'm not doing those things that's pleasing God because I have the convictor. Not only the comfort of the Holy Spirit in me, but the, the Holy Spirit that will convict me of sin when I commit sin. And that's what the Holy Spirit is for. We should thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes sure, guarantees us that we don't have to fear not being able to walk into obedience of God because we have that sense of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God within us that will speak to our mind. That's why we need the mind of Christ and what Jesus himself did. He said he do what his father did. He do what his father tells him. Me and Jesus had an ear to hear to obey his father. That's why he's, the word of God tells us. He said, my sheep know my voice, nor the voice they shall obey. And I thank God for this being to have an ear to hear. If I don't have an ear to hear the voice of God, but only we can have an ear to hear the voice of God because we will his children. And we're not only his children, we're his friends, and we're his sons and his daughters. So we are part of the family of God. So my brothers and sisters, we will not be having communion today. I will be doing communion on New Year's um, Eve night. I will be doing communion before we end our um, old year out of New Year in. And I know we are a couple of days we are off, but my brothers, I don't know about you. I believe God, I'm going to be here to see the end and the new beginning of 2022. But I tell you what, I'm going to live every day. Even just like it's my last day, not fearing death, not fearing I'm not going to be here. But when the word of God said, the joy of my spirit, I'm going to walk in the joy of God, the peace of God, the love of God, the faith of God. Keep my heart pure and right when you want to get out of tune. Especially my heart want to get out of tune. I'm going to add, like I said, add more word to it. So I have this word in the heart that we send I'm going to add more word. I'm going to pound it and pound it. <laughs> so it can't do anything but receive the word of God. That what? That we shall be prepared, not only prepared for his coming, but we have other individuals to be prepared for his coming. And that's my prayer for, but we will be having communion then. We will be um, communing and toasting on the end of the old year and gracing the new year. But my brother and sister, I want you to know that I love you all tonight, family, friends, and supporters. And my prayers to you that the grace, mercy, and peace, and love of God will always be with you, even to the end of time, that you will share this with other individuals. Share with your loved ones. Share with individuals you don't even know. Let them know. Remind them. That's why the Word of God told us in this moment, how we need to remind each other of His return. We need to remind others that He is coming back again. He is coming back again. Not to fear, but to make sure we prepare and that we prepare others. How this time is now, my brothers and sisters. I pray I said something I said earlier that to encourage you today. May you be blessed of the Lord. May you remember that our Lord Jesus is coming back again. He is coming back again for you. He is coming back again for I. And knowing that um, this is the last scripture I do to share with you. It's First Thessalonians 5, 23. It said, And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I'm believing for you, my brother and sister. I'm believing. And that the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because our Lord Jesus is coming back again for you and I. And God, I love you and I do too. And we're going to end in prayer now. All wise the Holy Father in heaven. We give you glory. We give you honor praise. We thank you for the word of God on today. I thank you for the people of God on today. I thank you for your word that you said is quick and powerful and sharp that in it too as for a person, even divine of son of soul, spirit of joy and power and the discerning of the thoughts and the tents of the heart. Let your word as go forth on the north of God with fire. Hallelujah. Fire. You said your word that your Holy Spirit is a consuming fire. 
Let your word go forth in our hearts and be like when, this, when they was hearing when you had proclaimed your word was proclaimed. And they said, oh, then our hearts burn within. Let your word like a consumer God burn deep down within our hearts. Let it be no more a heart of flesh, stone, but a heart of flesh. That you have your perfect will in our heart. That the Holy Spirit will flame like no before. That we walk in purity and holiness. That we continue to walk in faith and love according to your word. That only you alone will get the glory. I thank you even now, God, for that individual that may not be saved. I thank you, Lord God, for drawing them unto you through by your word, throughout the Holy Spirit. For you said, all have sinned, all have shed the glory of God. And for the wages of sin is death, for the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You said, God, if we only confess with our mouth for the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. For a man believe in the heart of the righteous, and confess his name to salvation. And we thank you, God, that you said, if we only confess our sins, you're faithful. Faith and just forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us all in right. But I thank you, God, for the love, the love of God, that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus. Jesus to die when he committed his love to us when he had sinned. That Christ died for us because of love that not only you, Father, had for us, but even our brother Jesus had for us. That he shed his blood. And now he is the rule and reign in heaven on the right hand of the Father. And we thank you for even sending back the comforter of the Holy Spirit that sealed us. The seal and the power of God. And being in this new family, God, that we can go forth and walk in the wholeness of you, God, with pure hearts and pure minds, Lord God. We thank you even now, God, for my brothers and sisters that may be in a back city state. I thank you, God, for their hearts. Their hearts being transformed. They will cry out, God, and ask you to forgive them of the sin they committed in the word, even thought against themselves, against their fellow man, or even against you, God. That the Holy Spirit will manifest in them to the fullness, and they be restored back, they be reconciled. Back into the family of God in the rightful place they should be and continue to do the son you has ordained to be so of them here in the earth that you receive the glory and praise on them. Even those God has blasphemed your name. Blaspheme your name, even against the Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that you will have mercy upon them, that they don't only repent. They don't only repent, Lord God, even those that are admonished to sin, admonished to the, the evil, wicked works of darkness that, that's in bondage and feel like there's no hope, there's no way out, that there's no way out. We're praying and believing and great, my brothers and sisters, that those that are in bondage to that and to sin, that Lord God, in the bondage and evil wickedness of the enemy, that may be loose and be set free, that they have a ear to hear and a heart to receive and a mind to receive from you, God, and they too will repent of their sin and cry, but let us they do to be saved. Because you said in your word, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is to all, to all who receive this great gospel. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died, buried, and resurrected, not only resurrected, but walked amongst the earth for 40 days. And then he'll sit into the heaven on the right hand of the Father and sent back his Holy Spirit that may seal us to the day of redemption. And we thank you, God, for the redeeming blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father God, bless all the hearers on today. Bless them and their families. Comfort those that are bereaved. Heal those that are afflicted and affirmed. Father God, those that have many needs of all necessities of life. We thank you, God, for supplying that every need of culture, riches, and glory through God Christ Jesus. And we thank you even now, God, for the saints of God, for the gifts being stirred with every born again believer. That we go forth using our gifts in urban, urban vessels here in the earth. To bring glory unto you, that your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And we give you glory and honor and praise and thank you for it. even now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Love you to life. You go and be blessed of the Lord. And, and knowing that the joy of the Lord is your strength. In Jesus' name.